Today we're diving into a DIY project that's perfect for anyone looking to improve their home's energy efficiency. We're going to build a heat recovery ventilator, or HRV, and I'll explain how it works along the way. Let's get started. So what exactly is an HRV? In simple terms, it's a system that exchanges stale indoor air with fresh outdoor air while recovering heat from the outgoing air to warm the incoming air. This helps maintain a healthy indoor humidity and improves air quality without wasting energy. It's like opening the window without any of that cold air coming in. This is not the same as a company that simply named themselves HRV when really all they do is move air from one place to another. Here's what you'll need for this project. Aluminium ducting, about two meters. Some computer fans, two of them. I go with the 120 millimeter variety and a 12 volt power supply for them. It's also handy to have some temperature and humidity sensing devices. Now for the core or the heart of the project, we're using plastic signboard. It's corrugated like cardboard. A lot of house for sale signs use this material. We're going to cut out heaps of them, enough to fill the full thickness of my wood, and every second one's an alternating direction. So I've cut this plexiglass that I had, just cut it with the grinder. And of course it doesn't fit. We got there in the end though. And here it is powered up. We're running about 3 watts at 12 volts. This is the intake fan from outside. Is it? <laughs> what way is that? Top one is the exhaust, the dirty air going outside. Bottom one is the intake. The air will come along up here, get warmed up as the other one is exhausting and come into the room. So we can see there's a good amount of flow on there. And at the bottom, I'm just making my own connections out of the strapping plate. So I'll just bend the end of that. And then cut it to length. And that will make this. Put a strap across here to stop it going into the fan. And then I'll bend these in and tape it up. It's hooked up just for a quick test out the window. That's not how it's going to go, of course. It'll go through the roof, through the soffit. And if I get my thermal camera out here. You can see that the bottom left and right are totally different temperatures and the top two are the halfway mixed. So it's working good. It's even starting to fog up a little bit on this corner here. So the room air comes in here through the heat unit and then outside. And then fresh air comes in through here. You can almost see the lines that it's going to follow and then comes out. So I've got a thermometer outside it. So the air in the blue is before it enters the heat exchanger and in the red at the bottom there is after it's exited the heat exchanger. We can see it's both warmed up and become a lot drier, changing from 78% humid down to 45% humid. I'll explain how that works in a second. I'm pretty happy with these results. It's a good dehumidifier like that. Me from the future here. This has really worked. I've been using it through the winter and I'm not running the dehumidifier anymore. So it's saved me about $10 a week now. Although note, the dehumidifying function only works when it's colder outside than the inside temperature of the house. So why are we doing all this? Because we hate condensation and mold. But what causes it? When the air is warm, it can hold more water in the air. But as the temperature cools off, that same amount of air isn't capable of holding as much moisture. I've got three bowls, each representing 
how much uh, moisture the air can hold for each given temperature. So when the bowl is full, that's 100% humidity. At the moment, we're sitting at 50% humidity in a nice warm room. Let's slowly decrease the temperature down to 15 degrees. And all of a sudden, we're sitting at about 90% humidity. Now, what happens if we then decrease the temperature some more? The humidity keeps rising, rising, 80%, 90%, 100%. Now what's going to happen? Oh my gosh. Condensation, and it is going everywhere. Running across the window sills, down onto the floor. Luckily, we've got our trusty window back here. Whoa. What a mess. So maybe you keep your house warmer than outside temperature in winter. And guess what? You got unfrickin insulated walls. Condensation. Single glazed windows. Yep, condensation. Oh, I wonder why it's going rotten down here. Clothes hanging up in your closet that's on an outside wall. Condensation. And mold. Condensation. Seem familiar? While the heat exchanger is a vital way to improve indoor air in winter, especially when it's raining and you can't open the windows, you still cannot get rid of condensation completely unless you got insulation everywhere. You can't have those cold surfaces like single glazed windows and walls, even if your house is relatively dry on the inside. Now, if we take this whole process and run it in reverse, we're outside, it's cold, it's almost 100% humidity, it's condensating everywhere, you get your car windscreens getting moisture on it, the grass is dewy because it's all overflowing everywhere. We bring it through our heat exchanger, which warms it up and brings it into the house. And now magically, that same 100% wet air is now only 40% humidity once it's at room temperature. There's the magic of the heat exchanger. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Wishing you all warm houses and mold-free winters.